Peace, peace, peace. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you who don't know, it's your boy Vic Slain Hope, and I got another book review for y'all. Today's book is Propaganda by Edward Bernays. Edward Bernays is the nephew of Sigmund Freud. If, if you don't you don't know who that is, he is the father of psychology, right? Of psychoanalysis. Now the book is eleven chapters long. It's 168 pages short. That's a relatively short book for the amount of information that he puts in here. So it's a very informal book, and it's short for the people who don't like to read, right? So you, you can get it done. Come on. I believe in y'all guys. So why I read the book? The reason I read the book is because one of my good brothers, um, Zach, out there in Minneapolis, Minnesota, he gave me like a few book suggestions and this was one of them and i believe this is this might be one of the best books that he suggested to me but amongst the books that he suggested is also how to win friends and influence people um outwit and devil think and grow rich rich dad poor dad i believe he also um suggested that to me but he suggested to me a, a, a few books that i kind of like immensely benefited from and this is one of the books now the so that's why i read it what the book is basically about is, like what it says, propaganda, right? Now, what is propaganda? Propaganda is the mechanism by which ideas are disseminated on a large scale. It's propaganda. In the broad sense of an organized effort to spread a particular belief or a doctrine. So, propaganda, the word propaganda has had this negative, people have given it this negative connotation. So the book is basically explaining how everybody basically uses propaganda, right? And it's not necessarily this negative thing that we have given it this meaning, right? It's almost like the word manipulation, right? Manipulation has a negative connotation to it, but it really has that connotation because we have given it to it. But in reality, manipulation is just like a form of persuasion, right? Like I mentioned before, when your mom used to tell you eat your veggies so you could be strong like Popeye's or eat your spinach or eat your veggies so you could be strong, that's a form of manipulation, right? But we wouldn't look at her like she was evil for that because she was doing it for a good purpose, right? To get us to eat the vegetables so we could get certain nutrients and minerals that we need in our bodies. So that's just an example. So in the book, they break down how propaganda has been taken out of context and given this negative um, meaning and, and, and understanding to it. So they basically was breaking down that everybody uses propaganda in a sense to kind of like try to propagate whatever it is that they're trying to do, right? Their ideas, if they're trying to sell something, right? Commercials. Um, but the book also breaks down how only a small percentage of people are in control of what we see, of what we hear, right? Of what we come in contact with, which is kind of like what I was telling you in another video, right? Six major companies own all of media, right? So a small band of people are controlling everything we damn near intake, the, the ways that we think, the things that we pass around to one another, right? And one of the things that I want to um, highlight also is um, it says thousands of women may unconsciously belong to a sorority which follows the fashion set by a single society leader. Now you know what a sorority is, right? It's 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 a it's a it's kind of like a social women's group in a college university setting, right? So they kind of like share the same ideas, they kind of like share a lot of similarities, right? And so the book is saying basically a lot of women belong to unconsciously belong to the secret sororities, right? And they're following the, the, the ideals of maybe like one or two people. And I give you an example of this, right? For example, think about the things that a lot of women say, right? Think about, and men fall into this category too, right? They follow certain people. Um, but think about the things that some of these sisters say. If you gay, just say that. If you broke, just say that. Oh, I need a six-figure man, right? Think about it. They never were saying that until they kind of heard the city girl say some, some, some six figure nigga, blah, 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 blah. You, you know, you know what I'm talking about. So they unconsciously are 
propagating and passing around, they part of the sorority, right? Because it's almost like most of the women are saying the same shit. They got all the same slogans. They got all the same sayings. They follow all these toxic pages on, on, on social media. So they sharing a community. They are part of a community and it's propaganda, right? They're being fed propaganda and they're intaking it. They're, 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 they're registering it in their mind and they're making it a part of their daily lives and they are believing in some of these ideals. No matter if it's realistic or not, they are living in some of these ideals. So that's just an example. Um, the same thing kind of like happened. Another point I wanted to point out is um, when it says they not only appeal to the individual by means of every approach, visual, graphic, and auditory to support the national endeavor, but they also secure the cooperation of key men in every group, persons who were um, persons who mere word carry authority to hundreds of thousands or hundreds to hundreds or hundreds of thousands of followers. So same thing when, when the Kyrie Irving situation happened, you had people like Shaq, right? These people got millions of followers, right? You got people like Charles Barkley, black people, right? That were out here talking about suspend Kyrie Irving before he even got suspended. It was black people with followers right would influence over black people um saying these things because look if it was white people saying that we wouldn't even really be moved by it right we would just be like whatever but this is how propaganda works they control these people on television to say certain things so these people came out and they were talking about certain things right they're saying certain things and it's moving the masses i'll give you another example jay-z when they wanted to build the barclay center in brooklyn a lot of residents came out and said, no, we don't want this being built here, right? What did they do? They went and got Jay-Z. He was a minority owner, like 1% or less, right? And they used his face as propaganda to get the black folks to back off of the building of the Barclays Center. See, the community knew the moment you build an arena in a neighborhood, everything goes up. The food, the rent, everything is going to go up. So they didn't want that to happen. But guess what? They made Jay-Z the black face, right? Now, the black people kind of like backed off a little bit. They relaxed a little bit because they like, oh, it's a black man. He probably going to help us. He probably going to look out. It's probably not going to be that bad. And boom, they used Jay-Z. And then Jay-Z ended up selling whatever small percentage he had. So I don't know if Jay-Z knew if he was being used or not. He probably did. He probably didn't care. That's how most businessmen are. They are not ethical, right? But anyway, <clears throat> the point I was trying, I was just trying to give you a few points of how propaganda works. <clears throat> now, that's what the book is really about. The book is just breaking down um, all of these different things, how propaganda is all around us in education, in, in, in the radio, through the, through the use of radio stations, right? Music, um, the arts, um, the media, the, the books, everything. Um, how, what, what, did I got, what did I get from the book? <clears throat> that's basically what I got from the book. I got from the book that a small percentage of people are in control of damn near all of our thoughts, our ideologies, everything, <clears throat> right? Because they control <clears throat> the message that they want to put out there. For example, I can't come on YouTube and say anything I want. You know why? Because I don't control it. They'll, they'll pull the plug on me fast enough. I don't control Instagram. I don't control Facebook. I don't control a lot of things. Even if I try to submit something to the newspaper, the newspaper could shoot it down and reject it, right? Um, the radio stations don't got to play my stuff. Like, so if I, if I was to make music, so I'm not really in control. It's a small percentage of people who control what is going to be pushed out there. Even when it comes to certain commercials that you get, right? Different people get, depending on what neighborhoods you live in and what messages they're trying to push on certain people, you're going to get different commercials. A lot of people don't even know how intricate that is. So I basically, that's basically what I got from it. Like to be mindful that where my ideas is coming from and how I'm being controlled in the way all of us are being controlled in a sense of how what, what they're bombarding us with um and the last thing is how do I plan to implement this book you know of course I plan to share it I plan to like you know bring awareness and just tell people that be mindful why you think the way that you think be mindful where the ideas that are in your mind come from right be mindful why are you so quick to put people in a box? Why we are so intolerant of people having different ideas from us? You know why? 
because they're pushing a certain agenda and certain messages on us to the point where when somebody thinks outside the box, we look at them like they're crazy. We look at the, we're looking at them like they got issues. We're looking at them like they're the problem. But in reality, we're just closed-minded and we are sipping the juice that the small percentage of people are feeding us, right? AKA the invisible government because they govern us because they control everything we see, we hear, we read, everything. So let me know what y'all thoughts are in the comment section and make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share if you're messing with the content. Peace.